Thank you, thank you. I'm glad to be here, and uh, I consider Cornerstone as my extended family in Christ, and every time I have an occasion to be here, I delight it. I love it. Thank you so much for having me, and thank you, Pastor Eric, Sandra, Joe, and Stephanie, and all the other people who used to go and travel to Haiti and to be uh, in support of the orphanage. The kids, they love you, and on behalf of them, uh, I say thank you for whatever you have been doing to keep this ministry moving forward. As Pastor Eric has said, yes, indeed, mission works work. Because if it was not for people like you, ordinary people like you, who believe that sending, helping, supporting mission work matters, I would not be here today. And uh, he said it well, at the age of 10, I was a homeless, uh, hopeless little boy growing up in the mountain of Haiti, not knowing my father. And there was this void in me. I wanted to have a father. Every little boy would like to have a father, a male figure that you can look up to. But I didn't have this chance and this missionary went to Haiti from New Jersey and start an orphanage at the very place where I was. And I remember when I first met him, met her, she did not speak any Creole and I didn't speak any English. And, uh, but love is a language. Once you learn to speak it, everybody will listen and will understand. So we communicate to one another. She brought me in and gave me a second chance in my life. So I went to school at a, very late, uh, at a very late age. And that's why, you know, God can, uh, 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 God can turn things that psychologists call as a, as a challenge. God can turn it. So at 10 years old, I went to school, and I start, I start loving school. And to make a long story short, she saw some potential in me, encouraged me to go to school. And after school, I go to med medical school. She brought me here in Florida at the University of Miami, get my specialty, loving medicines, and went back to serve. Just because someone believed that a child, a homeless child, can have a second chance. And that's what you are doing when you support the work of Go Haiti. And whoever, wherever you do it, either in Tanzania, Malawi, Ghana, Benin, and wherever you do it, it matters. Because God can take, you can take your little nothing and turn it into something when you do it into obedience. So I'm glad to be here. Thank you, Pastor. This church is very important for us because they have contributed thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars to make sure that the kids can have food. They can have clothes, they can have a shelter, they can have a truck to go to Dominican Republic to carry food back and forth. But you know, despite of all those goods and funds, there is nothing we can replace than you going. So I know it's dangerous now to go to Haiti, but we're working on putting something together. You can go to Dominican Republic with us and get some mission work done while we have time. And that's why I'm learning Spanish now. And someone would say, you have not even finished learning English, and then you go into Spanish. You know what? If you heard me speaking English a few years ago, you would think that I have done a lot of progress now. And I'm not speaking in tongue. I'm speaking real English. Can you understand that? Well, I love your language. And if you pray for me one day, maybe in heaven, I will finish learning English. <laughs> this morning, I wanted to talk to you. And I talked to my wife. And, uh, and she said, honey, what are you going to share with the people? And I said, well, I'm going to share the will of God. But it, it, it may not be the most popular message because I'm, I'm going to talk about judgment today. And he said, mm, you are going to speak about the need of Haiti, kids who need food, clothes, and shoes. You should maybe pick something more lighter. You talk, you're going to talk about judgment to people who want to help you? 
I said, I wish I had a choice, but that's what the Lord put into my heart to share with you. So I understand you may not be happy, but that's what the Lord put into my heart to share with you today. And the title of it is, But as the days of Noah were, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. And that was a word from Jesus in Matthew 24, verse 36 to 39. And I'm reading it for you. But of that day and hour, no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, but my Father only. For as in the days of Noah, the flood, they were eating and drinking Marrying and giving into marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark and did not know until the flood came and took them all away. So also will be the coming of the Son of Man. Do you believe that Jesus is coming back? He is coming back, and that's what Jesus made the reference into this chapter. As it was in Noah's time, it will be the same at the coming of the Son of Man. That's our hope, and we're waiting for Jesus to come. And he is about to let us know how to prepare and what are the signs. In Genesis uh, chapter 1, verse 26, 27, we want to back up a little bit to give you a glimpse of how it was at the very beginning. In verse 26, we read, Then the Lord said, Let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky, over the livestock and all the wild animals and over all the creatures that move along the ground. So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. I love 27. He said he created male and female, not nothing in between. It is important that we mention that there is nothing in between. You are really a good, good, good listener when you can understand God created male and female. I'm a medical doctor. All my life, I've been dealing with biology. I study chromosome. That's what I do for now more than 30 years. I understand male is XY and female is XX. That's what it is. That's what science said. At least that's what I have learned. So God was good by doing that. But it did take about 1,600 years, then we were going to have a different narrative. Approximately 1,600 years from the creation to the flood, as the earth population exploded in number, it also exploded in evil. Uh, the mankind become evil, immoral, crazy, violent. Currently, as of to April 2019, do you know the population of the world now? It's about 7.7 .7 billion people on earth if you take everybody together. In Noah's time, it was close to the same number, about four to six billion people living in Noah's time. And you would say, what? Yes, it is. I know in Haiti, I don't know for you, but in the mountain in Haiti, and when there is no electricity, at 6 o'clock, everybody is in the mountain, goes to bed, because there is no TV, no electricity, no channel, no cable, everybody goes to bed. So a man who can live all the way to 90 years old, 80 years old, can make a lot of damage in making a lot of kids. I know some of them, I know a man who has 22 kids. Some 12. Just imagine in Noah's time, they used to live more than 90 years old. 
they used to live 800, 700, 500. So they had time to reproduce. There was a lot of people in Noah's time. So the population exploded. And as the population exploded, sins, wickedness, violence, immorality, craziness also take place. And in Genesis 6 verse 5, we're going to read this. About 1,600 years, the Lord saw that the wickedness of men was great in the earth. You remember that the Lord said that after he finished creating everything, the Lord turned and saw that everything was good? Do you remember this verse in Genesis? He saw everything was good, including men. But. A few years after, 1,600, great, um, and they were, that every intention of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. In verse 11 and 12, now the earth was corrupt in God's sight, and the earth was filled with violence, and God saw the earth, and behold, it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted their way on the earth. However, there was a family, Noah's family, found favor in the sight of the Lord. Who can argue with me today we have violence in the world? We do. I don't know for you, but in Haiti, we live violence every day. Every single time we live violence. CNN and all the, those channels, they don't really tell you what happened in Haiti. Every day we have people dying. It used to be a time a thief would come to you with a knife and they would tell you your purse or your life. Today, you know what they say? Your purse and your life. They take your money and kill you. They rape you and kill you. Raping older people. And it's not just in Haiti. It's here in Canada. It's here in the United States. It is in Ukraine. It is everywhere. There is violence everywhere. I talked to a pastor in Philadelphia, not Philadelphia, and another pastor in Camden, New Jersey. And he told me, Franco, I'm telling you, we also in North Philadelphia may have more people killed in North Philadelphia than in Haiti. So the violence is everywhere. When Jesus described the events that will surround his second coming, he said, just as it was in the days of Noah, so will it be in the days of the Son of Man. They were eating, they were drinking, marrying, and being given into marriage until the day when Noah entered the ark and the flood came and destroyed them all. It is a fact we cannot deny the flood did happen. Every scientist, everyone, either you are a believer or not, you know that there was a flood on the earth. It did happen, and we know the reason it happened. The Bible said the reason it was happened. And it is mockering that today certain group can take the very sign that God has used for judgment and mock about it today. But let me tell you, brothers and sisters... God is serious, and something else will happen, and that's the reason I'm here to let you know. Jesus was pointing out that although the people of Noah days were totally depraved, they were not the least bit concerned about it. They were carrying on the events of their life without single thought of the judgment of God. It was business as usual. People are getting killed, violence, immorality, everything you name it. They were just fine. Everything was fine for them. Noah was a preacher of repentance. As today, the church is also a preacher of the good news. Meaning that he had spent years and years warning his friends and neighbors what the holy God was about to do. But no one listened. They did not care. Have you known people they don't care about 
anything. All they care is about fame, money, cars, sex, power, traveling. They don't care about God. They don't care about the judgment. They won't care about the coming day, but it is coming. 2 Peter 2, verse 5. The, judge, the judgment is coming, and it says, If he did not spare the ancient world, but preserve Noah and his family, and seven other uh, members of his family, when he brought a flood upon the world of the ungodly. If he did it then... God will do it again. And I know some people say, God is a good God. He will not do that. He's not only good. He's not only merciful. He's also righteous. Even you as mankind, you know when somebody trespasses, there is punishment. God is a good God. He is good, but also he is righteous. And something is about to happen. And that's the reason this morning we would like to take time. To think about it. The depravity and ungodly lifestyle in Genesis 6-6 six, six of the entire world at that time were enough to cause the Lord to regret. Could you imagine the same God who saw everything was good and he get to a point where he regret that he had made mankind Many scholars believe that the decision to destroy the world at that time was connected with the fact at that moment the Son of God came down and saw the woman, the, the daughters of women was beautiful and they met with them. And we can easily say that falling angels came down and met with normal women and they give birth to hybrids. And they were giant. They were violent. They were immoral. And the, the, the earth was a chaos situation. And God said, no, something must happen. I love the world too much. I cannot let wickedness to continue like that. When those Nephilim were on the earth in those days and also afterward, the Son of God came and have those relationships. Evil reproduced and overtook the whole world. And the most merciful act that God could perform at that time was to start over. And I really would like you to hear this word, to start over. God is about to start over over again. God is about to start over again, and that's why my wife warned me, you come to find help for orphanage. You do not come to scare people, but I want you to know that God is about to start over again. And America need to hear that. Canada need to hear that. You can need to hear that. Russia, Haiti, everywhere need to know that God is about to start again. I would say it in Spanish, lo hará de nuevo. In French, il le fera encore. In Creole, la fell encore. He will do it again. Either you like it or not, God is about to start over again. I may not be popular by telling you that, but I'm a physician. I used to deliver some bad news to patient. I know I would like to give the good news to the patient, but when the diagnosis is what it is, I have to tell you the truth. And the truth is, God is about to do something, something major, something, something hard. And he wants you to know that there is a way you can avoid it. In 1 Peter 3 verse 20, it is interesting that God allowed Noah nearly 100 years, some other 120, to complete the building of the ark. Through all that time, God used patience. God is patient, folks. He is telling you again and again, I'm a good God. I'm a merciful God. But I want you to repent because I am about to do something. As Pastor used earlier, if you know that there is a Category 5 hurricane that is coming, even though you are a good friend with someone, but you need to tell them the truth, there is a Category 5 hurricane coming. 
We used to live in Florida and near Key West. Oh, man, we love it. It's beautiful there. But as you know, Florida, there is hurricane, and you better listen to the local authority. They say, you need to move. You need to move because the hurricane will be bad. So it's not bad news to let you know, leave your comfort zone, move, because there is a category number five hurricane that is about to hit, and it will hit. In Hebrew 11, verse 7, Scripture seems to imply that Noah preached to the people of that time about what was coming. They did not believe. Noah were content with this, and they did not believe Noah, and were content with their wickedness and idolatry. Their heart was hard as stone. Their ears dull. No one repented and no one cared about to see God. This is the generation today. No one repented. No one cared to seek about God. I have my own colleagues, people whom I know for years. We spend more than 15 years in school together, from, from med school to specialty. They are good friends. But if you really want to, to be their friend, don't mention God. To them, they become aggressive and mad at once. And they used to talk about me, good people. I'm telling you, good people, decent people, good surgeon. We spend hours doing surgery together. And once you mention God and church, they get mad. They get very mad at you. Some of them speaking about me, they make this sign like that about me, that I'm crazy. I'm crazy. I don't know. This guy talking about God, he must be crazy. He lost one of his transistors in his mind. I'm not crazy, folks. I'm telling you the truth. Jesus is coming back, and he's about to do something. You better be ready. You better put order in your life because he's about to do it again. The flood is not coming with water, but there is another worse flood that is coming, and I'm here to tell you. You need to listen. The same in Noah's time, they didn't want to listen. They were marrying, having fun. They were eating, we love eating. Huh? Eating, 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 eating. They were giving themselves into marriage. They were buying land and making projects for the next 20 years, 40 years, 50 years. Do you know if you have more than 15 years more left? You don't know. You better put order in your life. Jesus said that the world will be much the same before the return to set up his earthly kingdom. He wants us to be ready because the Son of Man will come at an hour where you do not expect. He said at an hour where we do not expect. And Jesus said the same thing. He doesn't know the exact hour. But do you know that we can know the season? We may not know the hour, we may not know the day, the month, but we should know the season. And you can feel the way the world is going, something major is about to happen. And it happened quick. I am an old man, I'm 56 years old, but I do not recognize the time when I was 15, even when I was 25, I do not recognize the world. Things goes quick and worse. Something is about to happen. In 2 Timothy 3, verse 1 to 4, uh, we read it, and I want you to know, to, to read with me. 2 Timothy 3, verse 1 to 4. But mark this. There will be terrible times in the last days. People will be lovers of themselves. Do you know one in your inner circle? Lovers of money. Do you know one? Boastful, proud, abusive, physically abusive, verbally abusive disobedient to their parents. I have four kids. I know all about it. Disobedience to their parents. Ungrateful. You try to do good to people, and the very same people you try to do good to them, they turn back and bite you. Ungrateful. Unholy. Without love. People are dried. 
Someone, because you make a, 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 a wrong turn, someone may follow you all the way for miles and get out and hurt you. They call it road rage. People are violent. People will hear you and they will follow you and kill you. Unforgiving for any tiny bit of things, somebody will hate you to the extent they can kill you. Slanderers, people will say things about you that never exist. Have you ever stood in the presence of somebody? He is telling a lie about you and look at you in your face like you have done the thing. And he had the courage to, 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 to say it with conviction. Treacherous, rash, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lover of God. People can spend hours and hours to look at a game, a football game. Hours and hours. But when it comes to church, they are tired so quick. Amen? It is a truth. People are never, at least for my kids, I'm not talking about you, at least for my kids, they can watch TV and video for hours and hours. But when it comes for prayer time, they say, but it's time to finish. It's time to finish. We love pleasure. It's becoming increasingly obvious that to understand what the world was like in the days of Noah, we only need to watch the evening news. You only need to watch CNN, MSNBC, Fox News, CBC, all the channels. They will give you all the bad news. But the good news is in the word of God. You know what the good news is? God is about to do it again and he doesn't want you to be a victim. He is warning you today. It's beginning to rain. It's beginning to rain. Hear the voice of the father. Who tells you who is ever thirsty, you can come and drink. He will give you the possibility to avoid the worst. In Galatians 6, verse 7 and 8, he said, Be not be deceived, my brothers. God is not mocked. Some people take pleasure to mock God and to mock God's people. They think that you are crazy. You are retarded. You know nothing. I can tell you, we love people, but we are not stupid. Amen? We love people. We're not retarded. As you, we study. As you, we understand science. As you, we know what is good. But we choose to serve the Lord. And sometimes we choose humility. To serve you, but we're not stupid. But let me tell you, I know someone else who is not stupid is God. You cannot mock him. For whatever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to, to his flesh shall of the flesh reap. Corruption. But if he that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit with life everlasting. Brothers and sisters, I'm about to close. I want to beg you to reconsider whatever way you were going. Jesus is telling you, it's not the flood that is coming this time. The world will not be destroyed by flooding. It will be destroyed by fire. And do not call me a fire preacher. I'm telling you the truth. It will come. I'm telling you the truth. God is about to do something. There is violence everywhere. There is immorality everywhere. There is confusion everywhere. Now, a man is not a man. A woman is not a woman. You cannot use he, she. You are totally confused. Violence everywhere. We are so advanced in technology. They can drop a bomb, and this bomb can suck all the air from your lung. And you got killed. So we are ripe for something. And I'm telling you, God is about to do it again. And you need to repent. If you are listening, you have not have yet received Jesus. This is the time to make peace with the Lord. There's a song and I will finish with it. The song is so good. He says, he's coming back again. And he says like that, I am not a good singer. Whenever in my church they want to dismiss a service, they ask me to sing. That means everybody is leaving. But the song goes like that. And I believe he's coming back. Like he said, 
I believe that the trumpet gonna sound so loud. One day will awake the dead. In the twinkling of an eye, he'll split the eastern sky. I believe he's coming back like he said. Jesus is coming back. And he wants you, church, not to be intimidated. Amen. He wants you to preach the word. He wants you to tell the truth. You may lose some friends. You may lose some acquaintance. You may lose some relationship. But you need to stand for what you believe. Jesus is coming back and he's a God of loves. He wants you to repent and put your life in order. May God bless you.